Roblox stock just reported their third quarter 21 earnings. RBLX is the ticker for Roblox stock and the stock soared higher. Investors are wondering, is it too late to get their game on with Roblox stock? And in this video, I'm going to talk about what is Roblox's business model? What do I think about their risk reward? What do I think the stock looks like in the years ahead? If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel and you're watching Unrivaled Investing, a no hype mission focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. Let's dive right in where in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. And at the time of this video publication, I did not own stock in Roblox. So. Yeah, Roblox stock jumped nearly 30% on better than expected results, nearly $100 per share right now. And so as a quick recap, Roblox went public earlier this year and they're a platform where creators can make fun games. It's generally not for the most serious gamers, but it's rapidly growing and approachable by younger audiences. For example, about half of their daily users are under 13 years old, so it really does skew towards the younger side. And it's not just about games. I mean, there are in fairness, a lot of older players as well, but just it is worth understanding that that part of their user base. And it's not just about games, but arguably a metaverse of possibilities. They're integrating real musicians and brands. For example, they talked about an event with vans and skateboarding. They're in integrating all of this with their digital platform. Earlier they, this year, they had a concert and a scavenger hunt tied with a band promotion, and the band is called 21 Pilots. Now, just as a recap, Roblox makes their money as users buy Robux, that's the in-platform currency, that enables the gamers to customize their avatars and get exclusive content or access. Now, part of what, what makes Roblox a thriving community is how they enable creators to sell goods and experiences. Nearly 20% of every dollar in bookings go to the developer community. It was 130 million in the third quarter alone going to these developers. This encourages new content, which encourages new users because there's new and better experiences. So it has a beautiful flywheel. Now, is it too late to get in seeing this 30% jump? First, a quick plug, where if you're interested in following along with my personal financial journey, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, where each month I call out potential multibaggers as well as my personal portfolio. We also have an exclusive community dedicated to learning and trying to find exceptional companies on Discord. So if you're interested, go to unrivalinvesting.com, click join the journey. And if you enjoy learning about potential multibaggers, learning about exceptional companies, please make a point of hitting that subscribe button. And so while journalists and investors might get excited about their revenue, which grew by over 100%, in all honesty, that's rearview mirror uh, perspective. That's rearview mirror driving. You really need to be forward looking and or at least currently, what you know, what's the current environment and the real metric to track is bookings, which is a better approximation of actual incoming cash flows. The way they you know, measure revenue versus booking is revenue tracks the bookings effectively that occurred over several months in the, in the past year or two. So it spreads out that bookings that occurred and then sort of spreads it out to become revenue for this period. So the revenue now can be bookings that occurred several quarters ago. That's why it's so important to focus on well, what's actually going on with bookings. Bookings were only up about 28% year over year, but up about 57% year to date. Now, while bookings were up 28% year over year, bookings on a quarterly basis are actually flat since the fourth quarter 20, and you can see that here. Here's the fourth quarter, 642 million, and it was actually down since that fourth quarter. Um, now, given that the fourth quarters are dis dis disproportionate contributors to the growth historically, uh, you know, a lot really counts on how did they deliver during this upcoming fourth quarter. That will create a lot of volatility, you know, based on will they actually deliver. You see these huge jumps in performance. You know, $496 million in the third quarter 2020 jumps to 642 You look at third quarter 19, $165 million jumps to 236 So you have this big question of how will that perform. And, you know, it's curious if that happens again in the fourth quarter 21. Now, you know, part of the reason why bookings year to date is up. 50%, despite the fact that their recent growth rates are only around 30%, is because their first quarter 21 lapped two months that were pre COVID, you know, January and February last year. And so their bookings in the first quarter were up 160%. But then you notice once you actually start getting 
you know, periods where you're actually lapping how they performed in COVID, they've done about 35 to 30% growth. Now that's better, that 35, 30% growth, that's better than what I was initially expecting, arguably better than what management was expecting, but still it is worth understanding, okay, this business is now growing around 30%. Um, you do have this very, you know, good first quarter that drove, you know, the reason why it looks like it's up 50% year to date, but in the quarter it's up less than 30% year over year. Now, currently, Roblox has around 47 million daily active users, and that's up about 31% year over year. So a lot of what you're looking at with bookings is driven directly by the active users. So it's, it's you know, the way to think about this economic machine is you're thinking about, act, you know, you're looking at the daily active users and how much they're spending, the average revenue per user. And so you have these different, you know, components. So, you know, if you see daily active users are up about 31%, while, you know, the bookings are, are, you know, around 28%, that means you actually had a slight headwind in average revenue per user. And that's actually the case. Now, this suggests that given that they're at 47 million, you know, and, and when you think about the economic pie and global accessibility to games, you know, they, this, this means they have tons of optionality if they can tap into a global and older audiences. You know, if you can grow that from 47 million to hundreds of millions over times, you know, that, that creates this huge runway potential. It's a question for me. Can they do that? I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. It is a little concerning to see North America and Europe, which is this dark blue. Oops, this dark blue and this light blue actually down from their first quarter 21. Effectively, users saying, hey, we're just not using it right now as many daily active users in Europe and North America uh, so far year to date. Now, this might just be some sort of fluctuations post COVID, but it is worth understanding. Like, look, U.S. and Europe, they spend more generally than what you're looking at in the rest of the world in Asia Pacific. And that's where what's driving a lot of their growth right now is is looking at that growth in Asia Pacific and the rest of the world. So it, it is important to understand, OK, what are these different drivers here? Um, you know, I'm not I'm not saying once again, I'm not saying that this is not an exceptional business. Clearly it is. But it is worth sort of peeling it apart, saying, oh, that's interesting users since the first quarter are effectively down in North America and Europe, you know, two of the highest, you know, uh, components of, you know, what, where, where folks are willing to spend money, you know, in terms of richest, richest areas. Now, I've done a few videos on Roblox because I think it has the potential to become a really special company and maybe a core element of the metaverse, given that there's this platform and all these different games that people can easily access. And, you know, I think this trend of improving, you know, games and improving, you know, creator economy, I think this has a lot of potential. So I'm, I'm actually quite excited about it. And that's the reason why I've made a few different videos on it. Their year to date results have been stronger than management and I expected. You know, they previously you know, looked like they weren't sure what their bookings would, would do this year. And so far, arguably, it's been much better than expected. They did have this huge surge in bookings, partly in response to COVID, 170% growth in 2020 versus 40, nearly 40% growth in 2019, all pre-COVID. So it was really unclear to everyone what their future growth might look like when you have that huge surge, you know, how much was pulling ahead demand versus, you know, what's, what's this business look like? This year, they're on track for continued hype growth, you know, maybe it'll be around 40%, maybe it'll be around 50%. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm saying 50 to 60% year to date. So this does assume that they are able to reaccelerate their growth rate in the fourth quarter. We'll see. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt when I think about this valuation. Um, so on track for continued hyper, hyper growth, um, the question is, well, what's the growth rate in the years ahead? especially when in the most recent two quarters, it's been around 30%. So I'm saying over the next five years, maybe they do 20 to 35% annualized. That's how I'm thinking about it. You know, I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts on what you think their growth rate could be in the years ahead. Based on this hypothetical framework, I'm assuming 20 to 35% annualized growth. That's better than I originally penciled out of about 15 to 30%. But as new information comes in, you update your thesis. Personally, I still don't find the risk reward to be super compelling. And if they don't execute and don't grow, let's say 35% annualized for the next five years, then I'd argue the return won't be very attractive. I mean, that's that's how I'm looking at this where, you know, I'm assuming, let's say 35, 35, and 35, 35% long-term margins, 35% growth rate over the ensuing five years, and 35 times 
earnings multiple. And you could, you could, you know, if you have different, you know, assumptions here, I'd definitely love to hear it. But based on all three of those things over five years, that gets you to nearly 120% upside, which isn't, you know, in my opinion, if you're going to assume something's going to be growing that fast, you know, I'd, I'd like to have more personally, I'd like to have greater than 120% return if I'm going to be making an assumption like that, particularly because it's a reacceleration from where they were in the third quarter. That means their growth rate picks up from where they were. It's possible, um, but it's also possible you have scenarios here. Now, as usual, like, look, I'm penciling in a downside scenario of like 30%. And that assumes they annualize growth of 20% and that they get an annual that they get a multiple five years from now of 25 times and they get they're valued on 30% optimized margins op operating profits. So there's a there's a, there's a give and take here of sort of saying, well, wait a second, if they don't actually execute on 20% annualized, then I'd say the downside could be much worse. And that's that's the reason why this is a hypothetical valuation. It all depends on execution. Stock prices can go way higher, way lower, and it all depends on do they actually deliver. You know, if it's anything outside of this range of 20 to 35 percent i think you'll have a proportionate response um you know based on that you know if it's way above 35 percent annualized growth you're going to see a way above you know return i would expect you know way below 20 percent I'd, I'd same type of thing personally i just think there are easier plays out there and you know for example recently i called out for unrivaled investing journey subscribers you know a company that trades at a 30 percent discount to book value has historically crushed the indices over a multi-decade perspective. So here it is, tried and true management. And just pe penciling out, I'd argue, reasonable assumptions, you're maybe maybe penciling out you know, 200 to 300% upside. So that's a lot easier for me to sort of underrate, buy for myself for something like this, where I'm saying, hey, it has to grow 35% annualized greater than it's doing the most recent quarter in order for me to say, yeah, there's a hundred percent upside from here. It's just, it's tougher. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If, if you're, you know, heavy into Roblox, if, if you have a long-term thesis that you feel like I'm missing, definitely want to hear it because I'm quite impressed with this company. I'm very excited about the metaverse, you know, what could potentially happen from here. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in.